Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today I'm here with Sarah from Women in 3D Printing. So Sarah, nice to meet you. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Yeah. So I, I want to start with kind of a basic question. You know, what is the overall purpose of your organization? Women in 3D Printing was started in 2014 as a blog, just featuring the stories of women throughout the industry. But we've really grown our foundational messaging beyond seeking gender parity. So we're expanding a lot into diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we're really trying to show that 3D printing is for everyone. That increased diversity, like how does that uh, help solve different types of problems? Different people have different needs, really. So any group who needs something, there's a ton of 3D printing to make mascara wands. Oh, it's wow. fascinating. I did not know about that. You can check but, out a you know, panel. That, that's <laughs> part of your own bias when you go into a certain industry. It's like, what am I interested in? I'm, I'm interested in rockets and like airplane engines yeah. and stuff. And it's well, we've like... also had plenty of aerospace panels. Nice. You might not want a mascara wand, that's but I put some mascara on this morning. It's a trade show day, so that's really, it's right. a special occasion. But fashion is a huge and growing application, mm -hmm. especially in this area. So printing on textiles, printing handbags, printing these really very cool designs designer things. Uh, obviously footwear is a big one, so I'm absolutely rocking my oh, partially really? 3D Those printed are 3D... Adidas today. Those are 3D printed uh, shoes there. Uh, the midsole is 3D printed because it's 3D printing. You can customize which part of the lattice is weight bearing or harder, firmer, softer. So they're pretty comfy, would you say? These are amazing. Okay. These shoes are incredible. Uh, they're one of the best known examples in the industry. Adidas and Carbon came together to create these. And um, consumer goods. Lego is a huge supporter of our group, so we're really happy for that and to hear the genuinely cool stuff Lego does with 3D printing. Can you tell me some of the ways that you're able to uh, increase participation from different groups of people? Absolutely. We've been really focusing on building a community and fostering networking. At Rapid Plus TCT 2023, we have a booth, so we can actually physically bring people together. We're in 135 cities, I believe, across the world where volunteer ambassadors run their local chapters. They do site tours, lab tours, lunch and learns, happy hours. So really getting people together, making more resources available. We do a conference every January. There's no gatekeeping there. And then all of the recordings are available on our YouTube channel. Again, totally free because we want everyone to be able to be there. So another thing you mentioned was lab tours. What kind of groups of people are you getting together for those? Um, a lot of those run through our local chapters, so it's kind of whatever's around you. I live in Cleveland, Ohio, so we've had tours at local 3D printer manufacturers, and I saw the group photo from that one. Everyone's inside the BAM, the big oh. area additive manufacturing system, and you know you can get 20 people inside that printer together. So it's just kind of you know what's around, connecting with that local community, and then when companies invite us in, we tour their labs. I'd highly recommend getting involved with like lab tours because that's personally how I learned a lot about 3D printing and what got me so interested in it. Getting there, seeing people doing it and seeing how it's made, there's nothing like it. So if you're say a student, a university student, how could you get involved and like join in on some of these lab tours? Definitely by just getting involved, checking out our events pages on Hivebright as well as women in 3 dprintingcom Our founder, Nora Torre, had a beautiful message on our anniversary a few years ago. There's this mindset of, if you can see her, you can be her. And so just sharing role models. Having someone who looks like you makes you feel like there's a place for you here. Something about 3D printing is that often the uh, models that I design are problems that I face personally. Yeah. So if you have a, a segment of the population that isn't represented in your user base, then you're never gonna see those solutions. Definitely, I mean, we've certainly seen that problem in tech before when you solve a problem for your team, but you know, there are those sensors in public bathrooms that sometimes don't recognize skin tones. Right. That's an issue. They didn't think of it. They just said, okay, you wave and it works. Not thinking how light reflects off of different uh, melanin, melanin right. content. What kind of age groups do you get involved with? Uh, like how young do you start introducing people into 3D printing and, uh, and like, you know, how old are people before they stop 3D printing? And... <laughs> um, let's see, I've known a lot of people who've 3D printed till they died. Okay. So I would say the age range doesn't end. Hopefully not in a 3D printing accident. <laughs> not that I know of. Definitely I've seen kindergartners starting to learn about 3D printing. I personally keep my three-year-old away from my home 3D printer because I don't have an enclosure. Right. So he's learned very quickly not to touch it. But he does love the little toys I can make for him yeah. in addition to the, you know, 
cool adult stuff I print, which is honestly mostly dragons because I'm a very cool person. <laughs> but that's my home one. <laughs> but children can absolutely start learning anytime. Programs like Tinkercad really bring the, the ease to designing and starting to learn CAD for the first time. So we see it a lot in schools. STEM and STEAM education are really picking up. Women in 3D printing tends to get involved more from the collegiate age on up. Uh, community colleges, alternative uh, schooling projects, career prep type things. High schoolers do get involved a lot. Uh, we like to see people in internships at any age when they start doing that. Mm -hmm. 3D printing is one of those things where there is something for everyone. There are so many different types of systems, materials that can be safer to print inside the home or in the classroom, start doing that, get a you know 3D printing pen kids think that's kind of fun so and so do adults Great. they're cool there's lots of applications for toys and artistic applications it's not just all engineering definitely I absolutely have a Jedi action figure with my 3d printed face on it nice. on my desk all right so are you like a, a Sith or a, a, one of the good guys I'm a Jedi okay. come on. Yeah. <laughs> although I was torn between choosing the Jedi and Black Widow okay. but I needed a lightsaber and conveniently the day we we're recording this is May the 4th May the wow. fourth be with you. It really sounds like uh, in order for 3D printing to reach its full potential, we have to have participation from everybody to get you know different problems and different solutions brought to the table and just grow this industry as a whole. Definitely. The more people at the table, the better the conversation and the more things we can tackle. And I mean, what it comes down to at the end of the day is when you feel good about where you're working and the work you're doing, you can do good work. And that's what we're really here to foster, making sure that everybody feels that they have a place, because they do. And when we come together and just support each other, understand we're all humans, we can do good work and use this amazing technology to do incredible things. One other thing I was curious about is, you said you have uh, participation across many countries and continents. Uh, have you noticed any differences in the way that uh, your, chap your chapters have to operate differently or the level of like female participation in different regions? The industry as a whole has about 11 to 15 percent women, so representation is an issue. It is certainly higher in certain uh, demographics than in others in different markets, but there's a drive everywhere. When we opened our first chapters in the Middle East, it was really incredible to start seeing these come up and how many people wanted to get involved, start speaking up, and you know get together throughout all of these areas where you think maybe you don't hear as much from women in STEM areas. But it is definitely global, and the more that we make this common and acceptable and normal, the more we'll keep seeing it grow. So I think that's the most powerful thing we can do, is just really working to increase that representation, which then increases participation. I think one of the best ways you can increase participation is to get your mom a 3D printer for Mother's Day. <laughs> I will not get my mom one, <laughs> and um, I think it's better that way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Sarah. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, and uh, I'll leave some links in the description below about you know ways you can get involved with women in 3D printing. Awesome. Thanks for visiting us, and we hope to keep seeing people at more events. All right, thank you. Thank you.